Hello. Today we will be discussing the algorithm of using Neurographica as a way of creating a rebirthing chart. We will in detail discuss the um, perinatal matrices of Grof, Stanislav Grof, the contemporary psychologist who is the author on rebirthing. And we will discuss in details how those perinatal matrices um, can be kind of transformed through the use of Neurographica. So at first, I would like to show you what we're going to do. I would like to ask you to take a piece of paper and the paper that you will be using for drawing Neurographica. Um, and of course, take uh, a marker. You can choose for this work the marker of your choice, but please make sure to choose a dark color. Do not choose light colors like, you know, light pink or light orange or yellow, of course, or even light brown. I would like for you to choose a dark color so that it would be nice, a nice contrast to the white paper that you will be drawing on. And so that this practice of Neurographica will be, you know, a great transformational tool for experiencing a rebirthing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, give you the table for Neurographica for, I'm sorry, for the for the mattresses, for the Groves perinatal mattresses. And then I will show you how we will go. There are four stages and we will go through each stage and use Neurographica to transform each stage of the, um, of the birthing process that contribute to the development of the personality and development of uh, human reaction, human social emotional reaction to things around him or her. So I focus right away on the I'm focusing right away on the drawing and I would like for us to start and while drawing I'm going to tell you more and I'm going to give you the background on what exactly it is that we're doing. Okay. So Stanislav Grof is a contemporary psychologist. He lives in um, in United States, and he's of Czechoslovakian background. He um, practiced a lot working with different patients using LSD, which is a psychedelic drugs. That was back in the 70s or 80s, and back then it was allowed to help patients um, to help patients alleviate pain, to help patients induce their pain associated with various psycho-emotional um, trauma and psycho-emotional issues that they're experiencing in life. And he was a, te you know, he led a team of doctors that dealt with that. So during such instances when the patients the patients under the influence of LCD, he noticed that the patients would often refer or rather say, go back, you know, kind of regress back to their childhood drama. But this was not just any childhood drama. This was more, he realized, of an experience of traumatic experience that these patients have uh, have experience while being as a fetus in the uterus. While dealing with many, many patients, Grof came out with a revolutionary um, theory of how ne pre perinatal development of a fetus can have lifelong effects on the development of social-emotional physical and psychological, as well as mental, of course, um, areas of that person. 
Grove's um, theory was revolutionary because before him, usually all the psychologists would talk about childhood drama. And of course, we know that starting with Freud, who talked about child, really early childhood sexual development that would play a lifelong you know, effect on the psychological and mental and emotional development of a person. And then we have a lot of um, children psychologists um, that developed Piaget and Vygotsky who talked about, they, t- they talked about um, children's trauma, you know, childhood trauma that would shape, you know, the psychological, emotional, mental well-being of a person. What Groff did was to dwell even deeper, to go much, much deeper, to figure out what else. What he talked about is that as soon as a fetus, as a baby, as a child, as a person is conceived, a relationship with the outside world starts. And this is what he discussed. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide the page. We're going to make a table. Divide the page into four spaces, okay? So, and this is how they're going to be, um, with, this is the order they will go in. This is the first stage, second stage, third stage, and fourth stage. So stage number one is a stage that lasts from from conception to the very first intrauterine contraction. Okay? This is stage number one. I'm going to put down now a paper where I gave um, notes. I wrote down my own notes about what's happening in this in this stage. Um, I will be reading out from it to you while we are going through all the four quadrants. Um, so this technique was developed by Pavel Piskaryov, who is the founder of Neurographico. He utilized Grof's theory of perinatal mattresses, and he used them in conjunction. He used the theory and he used Neurographica in order to use the theory and to help transform. So basically, these teachings is based on Grof's mattresses and Pavel Piskarov's development of four quadrants. He called this the quadrants because, you know, it's developed, the paper is, the theory is developed, is um, broken down into four stages. And he specifically wants the stages to be going in this specific order because the, there, is a, there is a relationship between, um, let's say, the first and the fourth stage and first and the second, second and third, and it has to be done this way. And it's important for us to understand what exactly happened in each quadrant or in each stage so basically, like I said before, this is a development based on Grof's theory of perinatal mattresses developed by Pavel Piskaryov, and I added some elements of my own, um, and now I'm presenting it to you in English. So the first stage is the stage of conception. This is a stage that we refer to as a paradise. This is the stage that ideally a fetus is developing in a uterus in a gentle, warm, and safe environment. There is no trauma to the fetus whatsoever because the fetus at this stage, growth was, was, in his theory, growth was talking a lot about the fetus being the most hypersensitive being there is. So any little tiny details, any little tiny trauma into emotional, physical, or even chemical areas. You know, by chemical, we mean, you know, taking any kind of drugs, medications, you know, um, any emotional, any stress would cause emotional imbalance, which would cause 
hormonal absurgence in one area or another, and that's also a part of the chemical um, reaction that the fetus will experience, the hypersensitive fetus would experience as a trauma. On a spiritual level, the fetus, when it comes to the womb, it has kind of a natural, harmonious connection to the world. And the world at this point is the uterus, the uterus of the mother. So the world for the fetus is radiant and beauty and bliss. And that should be the whole um, attitude, the whole experience of a fetus, ideally. There should be, you know, like I mentioned before, just comfort, nurturing. This is the ideal way the fetus would experience the nine months of pregnancy, like I mentioned, from the conception to the very first contraction. At this point, also, Grof mentioned, there is no evil. There is no evil. There is no concept of evil in the uterus mind because the... the Mental development of a, of a uterus is very pure at this point. There's purity, there's pureness. And I personally, in my development, tied into a theological background, to a theological foundation. We go back to the very first creation, the creation of God Almighty, how God created the world, and God created the Garden of Eden, and he created Adam. God created Adam, and Adam was put in the Garden of Eden, and he was told, you're welcome to eat all the fruits, everything, all the, anything that the garden produces, all the beautiful animals you're welcome to enjoy. You're only not allowed to touch or eat the fruits of one tree, the fruit of good and evil. And this is the reference to the first stage. The first stage is a paradise. It's a bliss. And you're enjoying. There is a, you know, there's a unity. Adam has a unity with the Garden of Eden. Because the Garden of Eden was created for Adam to enjoy. And Adam is enjoying it. And this is the concept of the first stage. What I want to do with you guys now is we're going to start working on our on our stages and we're going to go one by one, okay? So what I would like for to suggest is put down, put your two hands on the picture, maybe bring the hands up. We're going to do a little breathing and we're going to Try to, at least experientially wise, go back to the way we feel being in the Garden of Eden. Okay, we're going to do a little meditation where we're going to breathe nice and calmly because this is how a fetus is supposed to be in the uterus. Nice and calm and enjoying his or her time. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a nice relaxing breathing. We're going to have a count of 10 breathings. I'm going to guide you through it. And then we're going to take the paper, the pen, the marker. We're going to put it down, and then we're going to do the release of limitations. Um, you know what? I realize I will, just in case, give you, we'll show you what a release of limitations is. For those of you who doesn't know, um, I actually suggest you go back and watch the video, the basics of neurographic art, or the basic of neurographica. But just to remind those of you who, let's say, knows but forgot, this is the very first algorithm in neurographica. When a person releases stress by putting down his pen, his marker, and then breathing and then releasing. Release happens in the graphical form, like this. Um, you put it down, and then within the next two, three seconds, you just 
let the marker go free flow and try to draw all over the paper. Try to expand your mind where your hand is not, uh, you know, it's, it's not limited by thinking that you should draw just in one little place. Try to go all over the page. Um, in our case, we will be drawing only in the one quadrant. So what you can do is you can practice, actually. Take another paper just to make sure that your hand is going to be used to and knows what to do. And let's say over here, you're going to be uh, drawing the release of tension, okay? Like this. We'll be thinking and then we'll be going. I'm just going to do it quickly now because we have to do the meditation first in order for the release to be the most effective. Okay, I'm just showing you how to do it quickly. See how my hand just goes up and down? We're not going to do it for so long. I just wanted to show you what free-flowing drawing is, okay? Put down the marker and let your hand go, okay? Any way, any shape you want to go, just take the over the paper. Take over, you know, make sure the space is filled up. Now I'm going to show you how we're really going to do it. We're only going to do it, going to do it within the next three or four seconds, okay? I'm going to count till three or four, and then I will say stop, and we'll both stop. I'm going to show you now. This is just an example. One, two, three, okay? So this is one of the way we can draw a release. Another way would be this, let's say. One, two, three, four, okay? So this is a very exaggerated form of release of tension. What we're really going to be doing is going to be doing a lighter version, but it's still a free form release of tension, okay? Okay, so meditating, breathing first, okay? And then we will be expressing ourselves in the very first quadrant. For now, we're focusing, we're closing our eyes. We're having a very calm breathing, relaxing. We're entering the paradise. We're entering the first stage. The soul has come to this world and went inside the body of a mother. Your soul went inside the, your body, your, your mother's body, and you're experiencing, experiencing bliss and comfort. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Try to feel the energy going to your hands, okay? You can even let your fingers move around so you can feel the sensation of the energy, the sensation of the calm, meditative energy in your hands. We're entering the paradise, and it is everything that we ever wanted it to be. We're enjoying our time. We're connecting to the uterus of our mother. We're connecting to our mother. We're connecting to the outside world. We feel this sensation of unity, like we are the part of the world. And the world is a part of us. And this unity is what gives us comfort and love and joy. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy to come to this world. Right now, we're going to draw we will be drawing, we will be kind of going through a rebirthing and we will be drawing the calm and comfort and love and unity and nurturing that we feel and we get from the universe around us. While you're in this relaxed state, think of a topic for your work Think, what is it in your life that you would like to change? What is the theme? What is the topic? I call it a quest. What is the quest for this 
neurographic drawing that we're going to do today. You can write it on the very top of your picture. Okay, I have a topic in my mind. It's very personal. I'm not ready to share it at this moment. But I think it's important for you guys to focus on your topic. Think about your topic. Breathe out loudly, like I'm doing it. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Nice and calm and relaxing. Feeling love and unity and warmth and safety. Gentle surrounding of the uterus in which you are sitting and enjoying yourself. Now we're going to put down the marker on the paper and I'm going to count to three or four. Um, depending on my intuition, you're welcome to use your intuition in this case. Sometimes you need a three and sometimes you need a four. And you will draw the freeform drawing, okay? So now right away we're going to count, breathe three times. Think about your topic, your quest. And then right away we're going to do the free release of tension. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exactly what we need to be doing when we do the release of tension. I'm going to sit down and curve all the angles in this picture to make sure that the whole picture is curved out. Um... If you don't know what it's like to curve the picture, I suggest you guys go back to the basic elements in on my channel, Lana Shalomov on YouTube. I actually have um, I have a video, a very quick one, a three minute video that shows in details what does it mean to curve out the corners or the intersections okay so I suggest you go back because this is a very important detail that you need to make sure you're drawing in this neurographical picture okay so we're going to curve all the corners and Remember to breathe, to have that nice and calm breathing. <sighs> breathing is very important when you draw neurographical. Because breathing is what connects your mental state, thinking about that topic of yours, figuring out what is it about this topic that you want, what is it that you want to achieve. Maybe ways of how to achieve it. And breathing is what connects you to the current state of affair. Breathing is what connects you to your physical body. Breathing is one of the most natural, most fundamental ways the body exists in this world. Breathing is a basic need of the body. You know, we have food and we have, you know, drinking some physiological needs, right? The body needs to move around. But above anything, the very first thing that the physical body requires is breathing in 
and breathing out. And this is what we're going to focus on. Breathing in and breathing out and think, think what we're going to do. What are we achieving? What are we doing? How can we think about your topic? Why did you choose that topic? What is it in that topic that brings you to the state of need? Meaning, if you chose a topic, that means you're lacking something in your life. What is it that you're lacking in your life? Think and breathe. Very important to breathe. Breathe. Actively breathing, even in a calm and comforting way. But the breathing is actually active, meaning I want you to actually breathe, you know. Make a loud noise. <sighs> kind of, you know, like kind of shout it out to the universe that you are so thankful to God and to the universe that you are alive. And we're so thankful, and we're so happy, and we're breathing. We're breathing, and we're so happy. You know, being in that state of happiness will bring us to the new stage. It will bring us to the stage where we may have new insights, new ideas about that quest of ours. Being happy, being joyful, can open up new ways. You know, when a person is happy, he even breathes differently than a person who is upset or sad or concerned, stressed. And that kind of new breathing brings the oxygen to a different level and bringing oxygen to a different level inside the body will distribute it differently throughout the body and will distribute it differently to your brain. And your brain is directly associated with thinking as we know, right? So happy thoughts, saying, I'm so happy I'm in this world because this world has everything I need. And I have everything the world needs. The world was created for me. And I was created for this world. There's a saying that I heard one story where a person said that at the moment when I was conceived, God said to my soul, you know, this world cannot be without you. Please come to this world. And this is what we should always remember. The world cannot be without us. We are created for this world. And the world was absolutely created for us. And this is the feeling that we will be having through this first stage. Did you see what happened? I completely curved out my first stage, my first stage, my conception time, my arrival to the uterus, and my being in the uterus for nine glorious, amazing, lovely time. I want to tell you that what we're doing now is we are kind of transforming, let's say if our original stay in the uterus was much more traumatic then let's say we know about it and we may not know about it not consciously, but our subconscious and absolutely our unconscious absolutely has a full complete memory of everything, every little tiny trauma that we experience in the uterus so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to recreate our experience in the uterus. And this is why I keep telling you to have a nice, calming experience 
Breathe in and breathe out calmly. Enjoy yourself. Love yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe that you came to this world and this world. Experience that unity. Unity with the uterus. Unity with the world. Know that you came here to connect yourself, to connect and feel unity. Okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to I'm trying to think. We are going to do the next step in the algorithm and connect the release of tension to the we're only staying in the first quadrant remember in the first stage to the outside world okay okay and this is how we're going to tell ourselves I feel happy that I came to this world right using neurographic lines we're going to connect ourselves to the state to the outside world we keep saying and breathing in I feel the love I feel the love of my mother. I feel the love. The love of my mother is the transcrib transcription of the love of the universe toward me. The universe is very happy that I'm here. And I'm so happy that the universe is here for me. I feel love. I feel comfort. I feel joy. I feel connection and knowledge that emotional filled well being that hmm, I am comfortable and I'm joyous. Okay. I want you to connect this picture, this release of tension that you have transformed through the curving to the outside world. Use your, um, use your intuition to let you guide where and how you should draw the neurographic lines to connect yourself to the outside world, to connect yourself to the, you know, to the world outside of yourself because this release of tension is who you are. First, it was very pale and was very sharp, right? Because we had a lot of corners and intersections. And what we did now, we transformed it and we made it safe and harmonious and very lovable. And look at it. Look how beautiful this picture is. We love it now. What we're going to do now is we're going to connect ourselves to the more to the outside world. Now, I would like to tell you that the more connections you will form to the outside world, the more you will feel, you know, connected, so to say. Like in real life, you will feel more connected, more in tune to the outside world. It will help you form a better connection you know, social, social-emotional, improve your relationships with, with various people, you know, professional-wise, you know, in your career, or in your relationship, you know, within your own family, with your brothers or sisters, if you have, with your parents, of course, for sure, because your parents are your very first connection, you know. Think about your parents and... You know, have the thoughts, like I said, breathing and saying, I feel the love and comfort in this universe. The universe is giving me love, comfort, unity, joy. It brings me closer. If you are um, a theological person, if you are a believer in God, you can say, I know God loves me. If you would rather use the word universe, you can say the universe loves me. The universe is enjoying spending time with me. And I enjoy spending time with the universe. 
See what happened in the picture now? We have connected ourselves because this, this picture that we originally drew and then curved out is a symbol of us. This is who we are. This is, you know, our logo, so to say. And we are connected to each other. We connected each other. We connected ourselves, I mean, to the outside world. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. It's absolutely magnificent. I, I look at this picture. And I want to tell you, I'm not joking. I feel this unity. Like, I feel like I belong here. You know, I feel like so calm and so happy that I'm drawing all those lines to the outside and I'm telling myself, amazing. It's like as if this outside was existed, just was created for me to be able to connect, to be able to draw those neurographic lines and connect myself to it. And I want to tell you, it's so soothing. It's so amazing. I truly enjoy it. Breathing in and out. Allow yourself to meditate at this point, to enjoy, to increase your happiness level. You know, you can smile as you are breathing in and out calmly. You can actually open up the chakra on top of your head, you know, the purple chakra that connects you to the universe, connects you to God, connects you to the top. And by top, we mean the spirituality area, you know, the spirituality plane. You can even, you can even do this. You can put your hand on the picture and feel it. Feel the energy of the calm, loving, nurturing uterus enter your body and enjoy it. I love it. I feel safe. I feel warm. I feel pure. That's what it is. Remember what I mentioned? There's no concept of evil in this time. No. Let's try to keep that pureness. Let's try to keep that feeling of being in the paradise. Everything is wonderful in the paradise. Everything is made to my liking. I love it. I'm going to take a cycle of three to five breathings. Follow your intuition. That's what I'm going to do. If I feel that three is enough, I will stop at three. But if I feel I want to go to five, I will go to five. Okay? You do the same thing. Put your hands on top of your first stage that you just drew and let's start feeling the energy of this picture in our hands you can smile and open up your top chakra the purple one oh the energy flow will be much greater that way, I promise you. <sighs> Calm, love, comfort, pureness, pureness. This is what we're going to concentrate. I want to concentrate three more breathings on the pureness level. I want to feel pure. I have so much love. I have so much comfort. I'm so happy. I'm ready to move to the second stage. What is the second stage? The second stage, we start the first contraction. The very first contraction that we feel is the second stage. Okay? 
the second stage lasts until we enter the third stage, which I'm going to put down right now. The third stage is pathing the burst canal. So the second stage is a contraction period. This is when the very first contraction happens until the time when the fetus is entering the birth canal. Okay. So we're nice and calm now, and then we feel some shocking feeling. Boom, boom. Do that actually with your hands. Boom, boom. It's a shocking electrical surge because, as we know, contractions come as a result of a hormonal surge, right? So the chemical, um, there's a chemical change in the mother's body, in the uterus, and as a result, those chemical changes create an electrical activity, and I do call it electrical. Actually, Groff also called it electrical. Why are they electrical? Because they create an electrical vibration, you know. It goes boom, boom. The fetus is surprised, right? Just like you are. You're nice and calm, and all of a sudden I go boom. You can do that with your hand. Boom, 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 boom. The fetus is so confused. What is going on? It wonders. Why am I being bothered at this point? Why is something telling me boom, boom, boom? Hmm, I'm wondering, says the fetus. We're going to go back to the first stage at this point. I want you to bring out one big figure. It's a figure of resource. It's a resource. And of course, at this stage, the resource is a circle. And it's so important. I want you to find a square in your first stage. Why square? Well, I understand. I hope well, I'm sure you understand why it's a circle, right? Why we need a circle and a square. A circle is a natural resource, right? This unity that we felt with the womb, it's a circle. I'm actually going to take a thicker marker so the circle will actually stand out. I want to make sure that my circle stands out, okay? And then we need to have a square. Why a square? The bigger square, the better. Square is a symbol of stability. I want to make sure I'm stable in my first stage especially when I start feeling some kind of shock, some kind of threat. So I'm going to make a circle, whatever. Now you do the same thing intuitively. You look at your picture and you will see a circle standing out. If we have neuro neurographic lines, the neurographic lines are wavy. So each wave is a potential for a circle. And I want you to feel that way. Okay. I'm going to extend this to the outside world because I feel it's very important. This will be important later on when we go to the fourth quadrant. Okay. So I need to find that circle. Hmm. Let's see if I find it. Yes. Circle will go this way. Yes. Try to find a smaller circle, but nope. This circle is telling me, please circle me. I am your resource. And I'm going to say, remember what I said before? I feel a natural connection to um, the world and to the uterus. So yes, of course, I will take this resource and I will bring it out. If the resource is talking to me, I have a natural unity with the world. So of course I will listen to the world. The world is telling me I am your resource. I will say thank you. 
I am so happy to have you as my resource. So happy you're here. Okay, I will circle. I want to tell you, so far I did not have a clear square jumping at me. So I'm deciding I'm going to curve out this circle. And then I will go further to find a square. I will I need to find a nice big square that will be breathe in breathe in I need a square that will give me stability that will give me that stability that I can rely on when I go into the second stage right because the second stage is here I felt the contraction I felt some kind of threat and I have so much connection with the outside world that I'm telling myself, oh, this is amazing. I can come and get my resources with this world that I made a connection with. And this is so important to re realize that connection with the outside world, that the outside world is here to give us resources when we feel discomfort, when we feel stress. Remember what I said before, this world was created for me, meaning this world has all the necessary resources that I need to go through life to deal with stress. That's right. When I get an outside stress, that means I am getting a signal that I need to find a resource. Why do I need to find that resource? What is the purpose? Well, that's a very deep philosophical conversation that I'm sure we'll be having today. Well, when we go through all other three stages. But one of the ways I would answer you is we are going to experience this need to find a resource because we come to this world as much as the world loves us and is waiting for us to come the world is actually needs us to come because the world wants us to bring in some resources that only I personally I can give in can contribute to this world this is a very important realization to have I want to tell you that this is so important to understand that you alone, your soul, your potential, your body, your mind carries potential, carries a seed, a DNA of resources that only you can give to this world. And this world is a synchronized world. It gives us resources. And we give it back some resources. We exchange resources. And by doing that, the world helps us to develop. And we help the world to develop. The world progresses with each generation in the world. If you look at the history, each generation is a progress. Yes, we do have some setbacks. Yes, we do have some regress. But in generally, overall, the world is a progress. I want you to understand that very much. Now, what are we doing next? Next, we are bringing out a square. This is very important. I want you to understand we need that square. The square is that stability block. It's that block. It's a building block. It's a foundation. I'm going to use an architectural word foundation for the rest of our life foundation for the next stages we need that square so I'm going to look so I want to tell you right away that ideally the bigger the square is the better it is okay the bigger the square the better the bigger the foundation you will have the better it will be for you Okay, so I want you at this point to kind of try to improvise. If you don't, like I personally don't see a clear square. I see some kind of, a, you know, corner that can turn into a square. 
but I want something it would only go in the middle of my picture and I really want a square that will take all of my picture I mean honestly we already naturally have a square here like because we have a rectangle but I want to be sure and I want graphically to express a square in this first stage I need that square that's a foundation of the rest of our life so to say the foundation and the beginnings So if you don't see a clear square, you can just improvise. You can just take whatever square, the size you want to draw, and you can just draw it. That's called improvisation. That's right. You can, you're welcome to do that. That's actually a whole new class. It's called Neurographic Modeling. Um, as a part of Neurographic America School, I would like to announce to you that we are going to present it very soon. We're going to offer the class in English. So that's very exciting, I must tell you very very exciting because so far there was no class like that in English and that's an exciting news um, that I'm inviting you to partake in oh. so right now I feel an inner resistance to finding the square and how do I feel that why what are the indications that I feel it trying to draw a square and I, I'm like at lost I have no idea where the square is something is resisting you know my inner self is resisting what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually breathe in do a series of three breathing to help my intuition clear up and then I'm sure I will find a square Yes, I did. You see, that does help. My square goes this way. Yeah, this is what I wanted. Do you see what happened? It was my resistance kind of surging up and saying, I don't know if you need it. I don't know if you want it. It's not going to happen. You can't find it. And I just told myself, oh, yes, I can. And I will find it. I'm going to take a thick marker and make a nice big thick square I need it I want to make sure the walls of the square are nice and thick so that they can withstand you know just like a nice house strong house with strong walls I want to make sure it can withstand any weather anything that comes into the world this square is going to give me that backup that stability the resource of stability and that's what I want I'm looking for really nice thick stability I want to make sure I have something to rely something to back up against you know sometimes you just want somebody to just you know exactly the feeling we just had in the uterus Somebody to just hug us, somebody to just take us into their wings and say, don't worry, shh, you rest. I am taking care of this. Um, I don't know if you're religious, I'm a religious person. So yes, I absolutely have that feeling where I tell myself, thank you, God. Um, I know I can rely on you, so I'm just letting you take care of this. I do that. I just stop sometimes when I'm very stressful and like when I'm trying to push things and sh things are not moving. So then I deep breathe in deeply and say, thank you, God. I'm letting you have this. That means you're telling me, don't worry, I got it. I'll take care of this. Okay. So I'm letting it go because I know you will take care of it. Okay. And this realization is so important to our first mattress because what happens in the first mattress? Do you need to ask for food? Nope, not really. It comes naturally. Do you need to ask for a drink? No. Any needs that you need to express? Not really. All your needs are completely taken care of, right? The universe takes care of me. God is here to take care of me. Every little need 
small or large, are completely and fully taken care of. Mm, thank you. At this point, by the way, this is so important to learn how to express gratitude. Let's express gratitude. Let's express gratitude to the universe. If you are a religious person, you can say gratitude to love. That's right. That's the basis of many, many religions. And I say thank you, God. You can say thank you, universe, if you prefer. But let's express gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mother. That's right. Let's, let's mention the mother figure because the mother is a figure that is symbolic in this stage. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, God, for taking care of me, giving me anything I want, taking care of each and every one of my needs, loving me, holding me, giving me warmth and happiness. Thank you, God. And express that gratitude. Remember, the more you express gratitude, the more the universe connects to you. And then it's more in tune to your needs and your wants. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me everything. Thank you, universe. You are giving me everything I want. You're taking care of every single need because you and I are together. We are synchronized. We help each other. We take care of each other. And this is the important part to remember. Each other. If, although in this stage you can just focus on the fact that you are being taken care of by the universe. Okay. Um, I was planning to draw my whole picture with a black marker. But at this point intuitively I feel the need to put it away. Yes, I am taking a brown a brown marker. Don't ask me why. No answers. No answers. Just intuitively. I'm allowing my intuition to help me make choices. You're welcome to make choices. Like I said, make sure you don't choose a light marker. But uh, now I'm thinking I would prefer to keep the whole picture into one color because we are going to connect with each other. But I, I don't know why I feel so strongly. I wanted to use a brown marker. I had a nice dark brown marker. Here it is. Yes, I'm going to use this brown marker. I don't know why. I don't know why. There are sometimes I have no answers and that's okay too. So we're going to connect to the second quadrant, to the second stage, okay? <sighs> you see what happened? I had some contractions, right? But now it's coming down. Because I went back to the first stage and I got my resources and I know that the universe is taking care of me. And this is so important for the second stage because the second stage is the preparation of going, passing through the birth canal. So this stage, the fetus is saying, wait a minute, I was nice and calm, taking care and all of a sudden, boom. Oh boy, what is happening with me? I am feeling boom. And what's happening is that I am feeling the need to resist that stress, right? I'm having some stressful situations. Something is knocking me down. So there's some kind of electrical imbalance, chemical imbalance and electrical surges are going, right? I'm having contractions. Oh, you know, when I go, boom, that's not comfortable. But if I go drumming a little bit, that's actually nice and comfortable. So who is to say that we should not have a nice and comfortable contractions? Although Grove argued that contractions are necessary a trauma. I suggest we turn that, probably maybe it was a trauma for us, but how about we take that time? Take that chance that we're given at this point and turn that second stage when we are all of a sudden experiencing stress, turn it into something else. Maybe it's not a big bump. Maybe it's a nice drum music 
that is so pleasant for us to hear, right? Right? Now you don't feel stressed. Now you feel comfortable. It's music. You just created a music on the drums. And your body may actually be loving it. So why don't we do that? Why don't we transform the contractions into a comfortable I'm going to tell you a little bit before we start drawing. So this stage is where we get hesitations, right? Where we feel stress and we start thinking, maybe I should just go back and stay in the uterus. And we don't understand what is happening. Why is this uterus that is supposed to be our unity world kind of trying to like maybe push us out, we start thinking, right? Like we're like, we can't even comprehend that. Why would anybody want to push us out? Why... It was such a comfortable stage. So this is important to understand that at this stage, before we actually go through the birth canal, where it's very active, in the second stage, this is our attitude level. This is the stage where people develop their attitude toward a new experience. You know, there's how some people, when you offer something new to them, they're very resistant, they're very hesitant, they're not sure they want to try it. They're not sure if it's going to be a good new experience. This is the stage. Because at this stage, the fetus says, maybe I should just stay in the uterus. And it doesn't fully understand the fact that the uterus cannot handle it anymore. For one reason, physical. Important, most important reason is the physical, right? The body, the fetus is so big that the uterus cannot hold it anymore. So in order for the body to grow further, to have progress, the body has to exit the uterus. The body has to leave the uterus. And that's what the fetus has to understand. We are, as you know, as adults, so to say, with a developed mind, mind work, we can, I think, understand with a developed mind frame, we can understand that this stage is an important stage because it gives us a chance to go to the next level of development. If we stay inside the uterus, the body cannot grow. And that's not the reason to come to this world. We come to this world to grow, to develop, to progress, okay? So um, even though we cannot avoid this experience, right, this contractions have to come, Let's try to make it into a nice drum music, okay? I am going to show you what we're going to do. At this age, we are going to breathe in a more... Remember, at first we had a calm breathing. Now we're, our breathing is increasing in its intensity, okay? This stage will have the most intense breathing. This stage, the stage three, will have the intense breathing like this. If you ever did a holotropic breathe work, this is what you would do. So the second stage is the middle. It's, you know, in the middle between the first and the third stage. So we're going to do this kind of breathing. You see, it's not calm as the first stage. It's not as quick as the third stage. It's just middle. Not as long as the first stage, not as short in the middle. Okay? So... We're going to take a set of, I'm going to do it intuitively, I'll be honest with you, maybe five or six breathing. If I feel the necessity, I will go up to 10. Please follow your own intuition. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a release of tension, okay? We're going to continue doing it in all the four quadrants. Release of tension. And this is how we transform all four um, stages. going to drum myself a little bit okay i'm having contractions and i'm doing it as a pleasant experience i'm giving myself some drum music okay i'm getting ready to do a throw the release of tension okay
okay now we do the same thing you know the, the deal now we're going to circle curve everything out we're going to curve everything out if you have any loose ends tie them in to the white side of the paper or to the any lines that are around curve them out and let's think about the stage what is the stage this stage is a preparation this stage is how we get our this is how we have reserves for the next stage the next stage is an active stage the next stage is a pushing stage right we have to push through the birth canal we have to go through the birth canal in order to learn to be active in order to understand that the active phase is important this stage is the middle you know it's a preparation for the active stage you know the, the first stage is the sleeping time the second stage is like you know like the time between midnight and dawn right And the third stage is the morning time, right? How is it in the morning? Usually people wake up, it's hectic, everybody's getting ready to go to work, right? Go outside, people are rushing on a public transportation, people are rushing, driving in their cars around. Oh, there you go, I just formed, you see? I didn't see my throw, but there you go, it formed a connection to the first quadrant, to the first stage, right? So there you go, connecting it. Curving everything out so it's nice and harmonious. We want a comfortable connection to the world. It's amazing. It's loving. It's joy. Happiness. <sighs> Breathing. You know, I want to tell you right away, at this stage, you will have the urge to go back to the calm stage because calming was somewhat comfortable, I agree. But we had our resources in the calm stage, and we, can, we will come back here if we need to. You know, we can come back and draw the resource from the stage if we need to. But let's... Okay, let's draw, let's breathe in the preparation for the active phase. Okay, so I curved everything out. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the first stage. Um, create some lines and create some lines and connect the, my inner self to the outside, okay? in order for your intuition to properly work so you know you're making the right neurographic lines connecting yourself your picture your inner self to the outside please i'm asking you to do the right kind of breathing do not refer revert back to the calm breathing okay give yourself to ex a chance to experience this stage in the proper way <sighs> Now curve all the intersections, all the corners. And remember, we are preparing to enter the battle. Yes, that's what I'm going to say. This is a battle, right? We had a nice calming training area and now we're entering the battlefield, okay? I would like to tell you this is amazing. I personally am getting this amazing framework where I feel the necessity to rejoice and be happy and be joyous and be loving and it seems like these are the symptoms of the first quadrant but remember what I said I don't think contraction necessarily yes they 
do have to be somewhat uncomfortable because it's important to have some uncomfortability in your life so you know that you need to step away from the comfort to go to the new heights and to discover, so to say, the new frontier, you know, the new areas where you have to step foot and start becoming more comfortable. But I want to tell you, it was uncomfortable in the beginning, but you can transform it into a comfortable drum play, okay? Remember that part. Be comfortable. Be happy. Give yourself a chance to love yourself. Excellent, excellent chance we have here. Go and to enjoy ourselves, right? I'm in my meditative state. I'm sorry if I'm not talking too much. I'm giving you a chance to meditate as well while you're curving out. This is the best time for meditation, thinking, enjoying your thinking process. Going inside your quest and thinking, hmm. What am I experiencing in this age in regards to my quest? And if you feel some kind of uncomfortness, discomfort, why do I start the breathing process like I told you? This is how you will draw resources by going into the stage and giving yourself the proper way to go and get resources, okay? So this is what it is. And right away, I already see the resource. I need a circle resource. So I see that resource. 